Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. With me is Steve Martin. And welcome to our new 10.0.6 studio. This is our 10.0.6 foam. Yes. <laughs> it's got a like, metallic looking back yes. there. And we're talking about, of course, Final Cut Pro 10.0.6 and the new features uh, that have been introduced. And I'm doing several shows because there's kind of little pieces throughout the whole editorial workflow process. And today we are going to go into... Audio. Audio. Audio components. Audio components. Well, okay, so what is an audio well, component? Well, components are the individual audio channels that are recorded on a camera. Like, for example, when you're shooting a, a, you know, a feature, a film, a, an event, what, what have you, most, most cameras now can record more than one channel. You know, some of them record of up to eight. So what do you do with all those channels? In a track-based editor, you put them in track one, two, three, four. In Final Cut Pro 10, there are no tracks, but you still need to have access to them so you can actually perform edit, edit functions on like it. Okay. Panning, changing the volume, uh, trimming. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do now with audio component features to manipulate these individual audio channels. All right. Well, why don't you actually show me how to do that? Show, don't tell? Yeah. Let's just talk about it for the next <laughs> Let me just talk <laughs> yeah. about it. Okay. So here's a scene. I'm about to want to set this up. Here's, here's a, a three-clip scene basically from a, a short film called The Roommate. And uh, the main character, Tracy, hasn't been told that her new roommate boyfriend's coming over and she's a little surprised because she just saw like a television show where these guys were you know she heard on the news there's a couple of guys yeah. breaking into houses home and she invasion thought, yeah and she's a little nervous and thought that that's what these guys yeah. are doing so she wasn't prepared for them yeah. okay so well, let's see let's see what what happens here jennifer oh hey get you back. must be tracy get back okay. tracy that's my boyfriend duncan and his friend pedro Hi, I'm Pedro. Yep. <laughs> so, both for Pedro. So, so very rough, because so this is just the beginning of a little rough cut of this thing, right? It's a little it's rough like, cut, yeah, but okay. it has all the things we need to show how this new feature works. So it's a perfect example. Perfect. Okay, okay so we don't know what uh, audio channel we're using here, but to find out... Yeah, control, we have no idea, it's just there it is. We audio, don't know, so control-click, right. expand audio components. So that's the new thing, expand audio, because you could expand the audio before, but it just separated from the video. It didn't show right. all the separate pieces. Like when you double click on regular audio, just it, all it does is, is well, you can't see here because I'm too zoomed out. But uh, if you just double click on an audio, it just opens up, it reveals the audio. But when you option double click, it actually reveals the components. So, so actually, let me, I, you gotta, one thing I should point out is when you're option double clicking, if you do it right on the audio rubber band, you're going to be adding keyframes. Key frames, right. That's just a little gotcha. So when you option double click, make sure you're not on that line. Not on that line, exactly. Or you can just control click on it as well. There, yep. Yeah. All right, good. So now let's uh, expand audio components and let's uh, look at these pieces for a moment. So in this case, we have four separate channels. Okay, we have um, we don't know what they are yet unless the uh, a production company told us this is what we recorded on channel one, channel two. There's no way for us to know until we skim through them and find out. It could be one mic going to all four channels. It could be one mic into one, another mic into two. You have just no idea there's what's a, going we on. Just, we just don't know. But something clearly is going on because the waveforms are different. Now, this brings up a good, good point. If you go to the view menu, you're going to want to turn on clip skimming. Clip this skimming. is just a huge feature that was introduced in the, a, few, uh, a few versions back. And why it's huge is that you can now skim in the individual channels, and then you, you can skim in here, and then when you push your spacebar, it will only preview that channel. Jennifer? Oh, hey, Get you back. must be Tracy. Now let's preview this channel, see if there's a difference. Definitely yeah, hear yeah, a difference. Much, much quieter. So unless the production company told me that these two channels were like the reference camera of Mike, I wouldn't know that. Uh, and this mic here, is, and this is probably Tracy, but since there's, um, since I know that the filmmaker only used one mic to record them, this is this is the the mic was on him, but not on on uh, her. Okay. 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 You can still hear so her. So the first two were actually his, and the second two were just uh, on the mic on, on the, the camera, on the camera, itself, on the camera right. right? So now to see the same components in the inspector, so we can control them, we hit Command Four, reveal the inspector, and notice these channels also show up. Um, so here. this is new, channel configuration. Right, channel okay. configuration, and it's on the audio 
button of the inspector, okay. and you can see those channels here, and you can skim through them just like you did down in the timeline. But more importantly, you can disable the ones you're not going to be using. So why have them there? So for example, I know these two channels I'm not going to be using in the edit. I can turn them off. And when you turn them off, you notice notice in the timeline something happens. You're, they're just gone. They're in just the gone. I'm, yeah, exactly. Because why have stuff there that you're not working with? Just makes it noisy. Okay. So I'm turn turn those off there. Also, you can rename channels, which I find really handy. So like, I know this is a boyfriend, so I'm gonna just double click and type in boyfriend. And I'll double click here and type in Tracy. And what's really great about that is in the timeline, whenever you name a channel, those channels get named in the I see right channels. there. So now you really know exactly what you're dealing with. You know with. exactly, okay. exactly. So now that we're set up, let's, let's, let's finagle this edit, let's, let's improve it. Now, one of the problems as the editor I've noticed is that when the boyfriend delivers his nine, we hear Tracy react to him while he's still talking. You'll check it okay, out. Jennifer. Listen. Oh, hey, get you back. must be Tracy. So he's saying, you must be Tracy, but she's saying, get back. I, I, need, I need him clean. Because yeah. we don't hear, hear her say, get back. Get back. Until that shot. That's, that's the that's the one you want. That's you the don't want to hear her say, get back twice. And you certainly don't want her saying it when he's saying, oh, you must be Tracy. Unless she's really neurotic and she says it both. Get back. Get back. And then, then she's got other problems, but and before you couldn't do anything about that's this, right? right? So you're, now you're, you can do a, you could, but it involved just you know breaking apart clip items yeah. and getting things out of out sync. Out of sync, right? It, it, it was not elegant. Now it's really elegant. So first thing I want to do is point out that each of these channels can be independently uh, disabled. For example, I'm not going to use this Tracy uh, channel right here. I'm going to select just that channel and press V to disable it. So V for disable. Right, V it, for disable. So this is the keyboard shortcut I always think of when I think of disable. But, um, <laughs> but I disable it. But here, more importantly, I want to disable the portion where he says, you must be Tracy. Oh, hey, you yeah. must be Tracy. So what I'm going to do is create a range. Because oh, you don't right. want to disable the whole No, just whole that thing. last okay. piece. Now I'm going to press V, and I'm just disabling oh. only what's in that range there. Okay. Right? So I'm going to play this back. Now you'll see that it's... Oh, hey. Now, what I'm going to do is see if I can get his, his line from the other take, from the, uh, from the uh, shot of her reacting. Because they shot it again, focusing on her, and he says the same line, so you're going to try to cheat it and move, move that. Okay, yes, I'm gonna try okay to so cheat let's it. see how it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is expand the audio components by option double clicking. And you can see, again, because I need my channel, look, this boyfriend, I can clearly see um, what I'm working with here. What I want to do is, is trim out, and I'm going to trim, you can trim either channel. See that? So independently, just like you did yeah. on the other ones, so no, but you can go the other now direction. Now notice it's okay. smart because the Tracy channel is, is disabled, it, it automatically disables. It's a little hard to see because the little tool tips in the way, but there we go. So now we can see that it's not including any of the Tracy channel, it's only including the boyfriend channel. So we need to figure, so he says, oh, Hey, hey, you must be Tracy. So you must be Tracy happens about right, right there. there. So what I'm going to do is trim this there to... You must be Tracy. So now... He, I need to get this line, the second half of his line, yeah. over here. So I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to actually use a position tool. And I'm just going to head, move this. I'm going to move this over to about right there. Okay, and let's see what we have when we play it back. Oh, hey, you must be Tracy. Get back. Perfect. Perfect. So you just took his voice from another, another take, take and only his voice and nothing from her mic and moved it over there. Pretty simple. Now, uh, he, her voice is a little loud, so I'm going to make a little selection range, and I'm going to dip the audio down a little bit, and it only it creates keyframes around. Oh, so when you set a range, instead of disabling the range, you can adjust the volume within the, the range, volume. and it automatically uh, sets keyframes to kind of ease in and ease out to that volume change. That's right. So let's play it again. Oh, hey, you must be Tracy. Get back. Okay. So the great thing is, is that when I'm done. Everything gets uh, everything gets collapsed back into itself when I just double click and look. And, and through all that, you never had a risk of getting out of sync. Never out of right? sync. That's, there's no there's, patching, no moving things on track. So I'm scrolling up and down. It's clean. It's, it's simple. Very clean. And then once you collapse it, you're you're done. So you're it's done. it's sort of a risk free process because yeah. you're not going to eclipse out of sync, and you can zero on exactly the piece you want to do and adjust it on a channel by channel basis. Channel by channel basis. Yes. Fantastic. Cool. Yep. Cool. So, Thanks, Steve. so um, and uh, you know, if you want to learn more about all these features of 10.0.6, RippleTraining.com mm -hmm. uh, for for that in depth training on the new features or the full Final Cut training. If you're brand new to Final Cut Pro 10, the Apple Pro Video Series, check that out. RippleTraining.com. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll be back for more. So stay tuned. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.